there! This is part 3 of video tutorial about fluids and electrolytes and for this clip we'll be talking about phosphate and calcium abnormalities, okay? So let's try to recap the normal values. The normal phosphate level, okay? The normal phosphate level is actually 2.5 to 4.5 milligrams per deciliter, am I right? And of course the normal calcium level is 8.5 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. Now, thing to remember in your exam, phosphate and calcium are inversely proportional. Do not forget that. If there is an increase in your phosphate, calcium level decreases. Do not forget this. These two are inversely proportional. That is why if patient suffers from hyperphosphatemia, do not be surprised that you will have hypocalcemia. Okay? Do not forget this one. And of course, a decrease in your phosphate will also result to an increase in your calcium level. So hyperphosphatemia may lead to hypocalcemia. Hypophosphatemia may lead to hypercalcemia. Again, these two are inversely proportional. Okay? The thing I need to stress for your examination is actually your calcium. So let's talk about calcium. Okay, let's talk about calcium. Remember, the normal calcium level ranges from 8.5 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. Now, what is the importance of your calcium? Your calcium is important for bone formation, right? It is also important for clot formation. That is why if you have calcium problem with hypoglycemia, patient is at risk for bleeding problem or bleeding tendencies. Calcium is also important for what? Calcium is also important for impulse transmission. Now, this is the thing you need to remember. Calcium and impulse transmission, they are inversely proportional. Please do not forget this, okay? Calcium, it is actually inversely proportional to what we call impulse, okay? Impulse trans transmission. So what do you mean by this? It means to say that if there is an increase in the blood calcium level, if there's hypercalcemia, there will be decreased impulse transmission. That is why if you have hypercalcemia, you will expect what? You will expect hypotension, you will expect colic, you will expect paralytic ileus, you will also expect weakness. Am I right? So it is something to do with decreased impulse transmission. But for a patient with hypocalcemia, decreased blood calcium level, impulse transmission increases. So you will expect what? Hyperactive reflexes. Am I right? So the patient's reflexes here are actually hyperactive. So please do not forget that in your exam. That is why you don't have to memorize all the signs and symptoms of the patient. Okay, if this thing will come out as select all that apply. Okay? Now, when I say calcium, there are two common glands in the body that will affect or regulate calcium level. So what are these two common glands? Okay? There are two common glands in the body that will affect or regulate blood calcium level. The first gland is what we call your thyroid gland. Can you follow? Your thyroid gland is situated here. Am I right? Situated here. Now, your thyroid gland is a gland that produces three hormones. What are the three hormones produced by the thyroid gland? You have your T3, you have your T4, and you have your thyrocalcitonin or your calcitonin. T3 stands for tri, am I right? Tri iodothyronine. Am I right? T4 stands for tet tra iodothyronine or another name for tetra iodothyronine okay or t4 is what we call your thyroxine am i right so please do not forget this t4 tetra iodothyronine and thyroxine they're all the same thyrocalcitonin is the hormone i want to emphasize with respect to calcium regulation Thyrocalcitonin or calcitonin is a hormone that will decrease your blood calcium level. So thyrocalcitonin can cause hypocalcemia, okay? Another gland that will affect calcium regulation is what we call your parathyroid gland. Now, where do you think is the location of your parathyroid gland? Now, remember, 
your parathyroid gland is situated posterior, in short, at the back of your thyroid. Am I right? Now, this is a gland that produces a hormone called PTH, or parathyroid hormone, or parathormone. Can you follow? You call this a short para thyroid hormone or your parathormone. Please be reminded that your PTH is the total opposite of your thyrocalcitonin. Therefore, if thyrocalcitonin decreases blood calcium level, your PTH now will increase blood calcium level. In short, PTH causes hypercalcemia. Please do not forget this. Now, how did these conditions happen? Why or how, why do we have hypocalcemia? Why do you have hypercalcemia? And how can these two glands, thyroid gland and parathyroid gland, how can they regulate or affect blood calcium level? So this is the scenario. Allow me, okay, allow me to clear or erase the whiteboard. Okay. This is your blood vessel. Am I right? This is your bone. Please bear with my drawing. Lovely. Okay. This is another blood vessel. All right. So on this part, let's say you will have hypercalcemia. On this side, you will have hypocalcemia. These two are opposing conditions. All right. These two are opposing problems. So on this part, you will have hypercalcemia. So what will happen if there is hypercalcemia? How will those glands respond? How will those glands react? Now, in cases of hypercalcemia, now if there is increased blood calcium level, that serves as a stimuli. Can you follow? It will actually stimulate the thyroid gland. So increased calcium level in the blood stimulates, stimulates our thyroid gland. So what will happen when thyroid gland is stimulated? Once stimulated, our thyroid gland now releases a hormone. Again, what's the name of the hormone produced by the thyroid gland? Very good. That's your thyrocalcitonin or your calcitonin. Very good. Okay, that's your thyrocalcitonin. The question, what are effects of thyrocalcitonin? Well, number one, your thyrocalcitonin is a hormone that will decrease okay, calcium absorption. Okay? It will decrease calcium absorption where? In the intestine. In the intestine. Now, why? Because there's too much calcium in the blood. So your, your thyrocalcitonin will tell the intestine, hey, intestine, you have to decrease blood, you have to decrease calcium absorption because we have too much calcium in the blood. Can you follow? So that's one effect of your thyrocalcitonin, that is to decrease calcium absorption in the intestine. Next, the second effect of your thyrocalcitonin is that it promotes, okay? It promotes calcium deposition to the bones. Remember, in your anatomy and physiology, our bones, okay, our bones serve as bank of calcium. Am I right? If it is a bank, remember, if it is a bank, you can either make depository transaction or you can even make withdrawal transaction. So what we did here, or so sorry, what we do here is we just did depository transaction. In short, the thyroid calcitonin will promote, will get calcium from the blood, okay? It will get calcium from the blood and it will store calcium inside the bone. Can you follow? Therefore, our bone serves as storage of calcium. That is why if thyroid calcitonin will promote calcium deposition from the blood to the bone, what will happen now to your blood calcium level? It decreases, am I right? Therefore, the effect of your thyroid calcitonin is to decrease your blood calcium level. Therefore, thyroid calcitonin can cause hypocalcemia. Can you follow? What about if it's the other way around? What if the patient is having hypocalcemia? If there is a decrease in the blood calcium level, if there is hypocalcemia, hypocalcemia nurses will stimulate the parathyroid gland. So what will happen? Hypocalcemia stimulates your parathyroid gland. Once stimulated, the parathyroid gland now releases its hormone. 
And what is the hormone produced by the parathyroid gland? Very good. That is your PTH or parathyroid hormone or the parathormone. So what are effects of your PTH? The total opposite of your thyroid calcitonin. All right. So what do you think is the first effect? It increases. Very good. It increases blood calcium. Sorry. It increases calcium, not blood. It increases calcium absorption where in your intestine because okay the body knows that there is decreased calcium in the blood can you follow so there will be increased calcium absorption in the intestine and number two the most important thing to, you need to remember your high sorry your pth promotes your pth promotes osteoclasts activity can you follow? Now, when you say osteoclast, sometimes, okay, there is a confusion between osteoclast and osteoblast. What is the difference between an osteoclast and osteoblast? Just an additional input. When you say osteoclasts, these are what we call bone destroying cells. Am I right? When you say osteoblast, Blast is a cell. Can you follow? An immature cell. When you say an osteoblast, these are actually bone forming cells. So please, please do not forget this. An osteoclast with C is a bone destroying cell. An osteoblast with a B is a bone forming cell. So what is the importance of your osteoclast? Okay. PTH promotes osteoclast activity. So what what would happen? If PTH promotes osteoclast activity, osteoclast now will little by little destroy the bone. Can you follow? So if it destroys the bone, the stored calcium inside the bone gets out. Can you follow? And that calcium will get out from the bone. It goes to your bloodstream. Can you follow? So again, let me erase this part. So calcium from the bone gets out. And calcium from the bone now goes to your bloodstream. So what will be the effect? What will be the effect? Your PTH now will increase your blood calcium level. Please do not forget this. Now, in your examination, there is a condition called osteoporosis. Am I right? There is brittling of the bone. Expect in your osteoporosis that patient may have hypercalcemia. Why? If there's brittling of the bone, the calcium from the bone gets out, okay, calcium enters the bloodstream, causing hypercalcemia. Can you follow? And there is also another condition, okay, that is related to hypocalcemia. Can you follow? And don't worry because as we go along with the video tutorial, okay, I will give you inputs about calcium disturbances. And we will correlate this with different disorders, okay, as we go along. Okay, remember that this is just a supplementary video tutorial of the review notes, the Chronicle of Medical Surgical Nursing. Now, let's go back to the topic. When you say osteoclast, if this is a bone destroying cell and there's excessive osteoclast activity, that will make the bone brittle. Am I right? So if the bone is so brittle, patient is at risk for fracture. That is why if there's too much osteoclast activity, it's not good. There is a certain specific drug that will be given to your patient. Am I right? And what is the drug given to your patient to decrease or suppress osteoclast activity, which is a highlight in your examination? You call the drug a Sherfosamax. Okay? Or you also call the a sure, okay, alondronate. Fosamax. Highlight in your exam. What is the action of your Fosamax? Your Fosamax inhibits osteoclasts activity. Now, as a nurse, what is the most important thing to remember when, when you talk about Fosamax administration? Fosamax can cause esophageal irritation. Do not forget that. With respect to esophageal irritation, make it sure that when you give Fosamax, you need to observe aspiration precaution. In short, there is a need for us to elevate the head of the bed when feeding. And you have to maintain bed, of the bed elevation for 30 minutes after feeding. And we have to maintain MPO after administration of Fosamax for about 30 minutes again. Can you follow? Let's, 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 try, to, okay, let's try to recap. 
Fosamax is an agent that inhibits osteoclast activity. It is an agent that causes esophageal irritation. That is why elevate the head of the bed when feeding. And you have to maintain head of the bed elevation for at least 30 minutes after feeding. And place the patient on NPO for 30 minutes after feeding. Why? Because of a condition, esophageal irritation. Highlight in your examination. Okay? Now let's go back to our topic, hyperhypocalcemia. Now if a patient is having hypercalcemia, if our patient is suffering from hypercalcemia, if there is an increase in your blood calcium level, what do you think are common drugs that will be given to your patient? Well, if there's hypercalcemia, okay, hypercalcemia, please be reminded that the doctor may prescribe calcitonin. Remember, calcitonin will decrease blood calcium level. Sometimes in their exam, they don't use calcitonin. They use another term, your calcimar sodium steel, that's your calcitonin. Can you follow? Aside from calcitonin, doctors must pre may prescribe by phosphonates. Remember, phosphate and calcium are inversely proportional. Am I right? Now, these are common drugs given to your patient. Now, since calcium, highlight in your exam, since calcium is inversely proportional with your impulse transmission, will it affect ECG tracing? Yes, another highlight in your exam. What do you think is the ECG tracing for patient with hypercalcemia? A patient with hypercalcemia will have short QT interval. Do not forget this. You will have short QT interval. Another highlight in your exam. If there's too much calcium in the blood, do not forget this. If there's too much calcium in the blood, it promotes renal calculi or stone formation. And the type of stone present or may occur if you have hypercalcemia is what we call calcium oxalate can you follow calcium oxalate and reminder if this calcium oxalate common question here will be what will you do with the urine of the patient with renal calculi and the stone is calcium oxalate will you make the urine acidic or will you promote urine alkalinization reminder calcium oxalate you need to acidify the urine of the patient am i right how will you make the urine acidic well you will have your acid ash diet am i right or you may promote okay you may you may tell the patient to drink cranberry juice remember cranberry juice will make the urine acidic am i right okay and if you have renal calculi please be reminded that a patient with renal calculi the pain is aggravated by increasing fluid intake and the pain in renal calculi can be found in the costal vertebral angle. And where is that? In the flank, lower back. Okay? Anyway, that's your hypercalcemia. Now, what about for patient? What about for patient with hypocalcemia? What about for patient with hypocalcemia? What are common drugs given to your patient? Well, remember, this is a form of what they call deficiency. Remember the rule? Too much of something, get rid of it deficiency of something what will you do you supply the missing one right since this is a form of hypocalcemia please be reminded that you will have calcium calcium supplement remember the rule calcium is best absorbed when we give them together with a specific vitamin and what is that vitamin answer vitamin d vitamin d what is another name for vitamin d very good your calciferol calciferol now, what is the importance of vitamin D okay, with regards to your calcium? Vitamin D enhances calcium absorption. So please do not forget that. It may be useless for us to give calcium without giving vitamin D supplement as well. Now, with respect to calcium supplement, remember that normal and average person requires at least 1,000 calcium per day. But if you're pregnant, you have to increase that to from 1,000 to 1,500. Please do not forget that. Okay? Now, what else? If there is what we call hypocalcemia, what do you think will be the ECG tracing or okay, ECG changes for patient with hypocalcemia? Patient with hypocalcemia will have prolonged QT interval. Do not forget this. Prolonged QT interval. Another highlight in your exam. Because of a decrease in the blood calcium level, what do you think will happen to patients 
impulse transmission increase am i right remember i said that calcium and impulse transmission are inversely proportional that is why if there is hypocalcemia patient will manifest neuromuscular irritabilities now when i say neuromuscular irritabilities patient will have what manifestations patient will have this familiar homestack sign patient will have this trousseau or trousseau sign and patient will have hyperreflexia allow me to discuss this one by one let's start with homestack sign others would say shibostack sign others would say homestack sign uh, whatever okay anyway homestack sign how will you check for homestack sign to check for homestack sign Okay, what will you do is you tap two to three centimeters anterior to your earlobe. Can you follow? When you tap two to three centi centimeters anterior to your earlobe, that side of the face will have twitching or spasm. Okay, so if you have hypocalcemia and you have positive for homesick sign and you tap, the patient will have this. As, as if you you may may you may interpret that the, the patient likes you no the patient did not like you the patient is exhibiting positive for home sex sign because the patient is having hypocalcemia can you follow okay next okay trousseau or trousseau sign another name for trousseau or trousseau is your carpal pedal spasm am i right when you inflate the bp cuff okay there will be trousseau or trousseau okay trousseau or trousseau the hand of the patient flexes and the digits will have spasm can you follow so this is what they call your trousseau or trousseau when you inflate the bp cuff am i right when you say hyper reflexia it means to say that the reflex of the patient are what hyperactive so if the reflex are if reflexes are hyperactive what is the normal reflex result the normal take note normal is positive or equal to plus two equal or plus two this is the normal reflex result beyond that means hyperactive reflexes can you follow another highlight in your exam let me okay, let me erase this part a patient with hypocalcemia because of a decrease in the calcium there will be increased impulse transmission and an increase in the impulse transmission okay blockade okay, the an, an increase in the impulse transmission the bronchial area will go into spasm can you follow so hypocalcemia causes bronco spasm that is why that is why a patient with hypocalcemia your priority is always airway of the patient why bronchospasm can cause airway obstruction can you follow this condition causes causes airway obstruction highlight in your exam a patient is having airway obstruction what do you think is the most common presentation of patient with airway obstruction let me give you an options one two three four what do you think is the common presentation of patient with airway obstruction number one cough number two dyspnea number three high poxha and number four noisy breathing what do you think is the common presentation of airway obstruction cough dyspnea hypoxia noisy breathing what do you think is the correct answer the correct answer is huh, the correct answer is actually noisy breathing not cough not dyspnea not hypoxia remember all patients with respiratory problem may have cough am i right why because cough is a cardinal sign of all respiratory problem patient may have dyspnea am i right patient may have hypoxia but noisy breathing is only common to patient with airway obstruction are you familiar with asthma remember in asthma there is airway obstruction that is why in asthma there is noisy breathing and what is it noisy breathing the adventitious breath sound for asthma answer wheezes or wheezing sound am i right and the wheezes or wheezing sound of patient with asthma is best heard during very good during exhalation and that is why we call it as your expiratory wheezes and if you have expiratory wheezes it sounds like this ah, ah, am i right when the patient exhales there is wheezes or there's what we call the wheezing sound can you follow so airway obstruction common presentation will be noisy breathing therefore the correct answer here is number four again common presentation of airway obstruction is noisy breathing 
Okay? Now, again, because of hypoglycemia, of course, you need to modify the diet of the patient. So what will you do? You have to increase calcium intake. So you need to promote foods rich in calcium. And what are those foods? Very common. Of course, you have your dairy products. Am I right? Dairy products are rich in calcium. So again, so we, we're, we're done discussing phosphate and in case, short discussion about phosphate, but I need to emphasize more calcium abnormalities, right? So you're done with your phosphate, done with your calcium. So this is the end of part three of our fluids and electrolytes. Watch for the next video wherein I will talk about magnesium abnormalities. Thank you so much and God bless. Bye.